Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. We have another excellent match lined up for you this evening. Some new decks enter the ring and some return. Let's see who will be king of the table tonight. Let's start off by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Ryan piloting Yisan the Wanderer Bard. This monocolored toolbox general tutors for creatures and is fast and resilient. He has answers for many of the situations his opponents present. Next, we have Dylan bringing back Una, Queen of the Fae. Infinite Mill and Infinite Mana is the order of the day, and Dylan wants to show everyone what Una can do. Next, we have Dawn piloting Animar, Soul of Elements. This combo deck uses the cost reduction of Animar to create all kinds of broken interactions. Free Eldrazi are never a bad thing. Finally, we have Mike piloting the Gitrog monster. This combo deck does broken things with lands and can win out of nowhere. Triggered abilities are the order of the day. Without further ado, let's kick off this outlandish oration outlining this overview of outstanding opponents. Ryan guesses the Michael Jackson trivia question correctly and gets to start us off. Ryan plays a forest and then casts Utopia Sprawl. He passes it to Dylan. Dylan plays a flooded strand. He cracks it to find an underground sea. He plays a mana crypt and then casts a grim monolith. After that, he casts Ponder and then ships the turn over to Dawn. Dawn plays a windswept heath. He cracks it to find a breeding pool into play tapped. With nothing else, he ends his turn. Mike plays a swamp and then he casts Chrome Mox, exiling World Shaper. Afterward, he casts Null Rod. Dylan responds to his Null Rod with a force of will. Finishing up, he turns it over to Ryan. Ryan plays a forest and then casts Quest for Renewal. He then plays a Skull Clamp, and then he hands the turn over to Dylan. Dylan taps 5 and plays a Gilded Lotus. After that, he casts Archaeomancer, returning Force of Will to his hand. All wrapped up, he ends his turn. Dawn plays a Bloodstained Mire, cracking it for a Steam Vents into play tapped. Afterward, he casts Hardened Scales. We all jokingly tell Dylan to counter it with his Force of Will, but Dylan wasn't fooled. Dawn's turn finishes up, and he ships it to Mike. Mike plays an Overgrown Tomb into play untapped, taking 2 life. He then casts Kodama's Reach, fetching a forest into his hand and a forest onto the battlefield. With nothing else, Mike passes it to Ryan. Ryan plays a forest for his turn and then casts Yisan, the Wanderer Bard. Dylan responds by casting Force of Will. Ryan is ready though and casts Autumn's Veil. Dylan, out of answers, lets Yisan resolve. Then Ryan passes. On his upkeep, Dylan loses his Mana Crypt trigger. He then casts Read the Runes for 5. He draws five cards, and then discards three and sacrifices Archaeomancer and Grim Monolith. Dylan then gives the turn over to Dawn. Dawn plays a Taiga on his turn and then casts Animar. After it resolves, he ends his turn. Mike plays a Forest for his turn. He then casts Hour of Promise, finding a Tabernacle at Pendril Vale and an Herb Orc, Tomb of Yawgmoth. Finished up, he passes the turn. Ryan plays a Forest for turn. He then equips Skull Clamp to Yisan and gives the turn over to Dylan. Dylan loses his Mana Crypt trigger on his upkeep and loses 3 life. He casts Mana Vault and ends his turn. Dawn plays a Manamo, School at Water's Edge. He then casts Ancestral Statue. Knowing the power of Ancestral Statue, Dylan casts a Mana Drain and counters the spell. Dawn then gives the turn over to Mike. During his upkeep, Mike casts Vampiric Tutor, searching for a card and putting it on top of his library. He plays a Verdant Catacombs. He then plays a Pernicious Deed and decides to crack it for 3, wiping most of the board. Rather smitten with himself, he hands the turn over to Ryan. Ryan plays a Homeward Path for his turn, and then casts Yisan for the second time. Afterwards, he passes. On his turn, Dylan casts Intuition, fetching up a Demonic Tutor, Vampiric Tutor, and an Imperial Seal. He chooses Dawn to decide which card he gets. Dawn chooses the Demonic Tutor. Dylan then casts the Demonic Tutor, and then gives the turn over to Dawn. Dawn plays a Forest for his turn, and casts Animar again. With nothing else, he ends his turn. Mike plays 5 and casts the Gitrog monster. He cracks his Verdant Catacombs, fetching up a forest. He casts Sylvan Scrying, fetching up a Bajuka Bog. He plays his Bajuka Bog, exiling Dylan's graveyard. He plays Golgari Rot Farm, returning Bajuka Bog to his hand. Finished up, he passes. Ryan plays Yavamaya Hollow on his turn. He casts Alanoar Elves, and with nothing else, ships the turn over to Dylan. Dylan plays a Swamp, observes the board state, and decides to pass his turn. Dawn plays a Stomping Ground into play untapped, taking 2 life. He casts a Glenalandra Archmage. Dylan, looking at his hand, decides that it's now or never, and casts Ad Nauseam. He reveals an Island, a Ghostly Flicker, another Island, a Pact of Negation, a Swan Song, Tezzeret the Seeker, Felwar Stone, Hedron Archive, a Swamp, another Swamp, another Island, a Demir Aqueduct, a Reliquary Tower, an Ancient Tomb, a Palancron, a Damnable Pact, an Academy of Ruins, and a Mystic Remora. Not wanting to lose any more life, he stops there. 
Afterward, Don attacks Dylan for two, and then ends his turn. Mike sacks a Swamp to his Gitrog trigger. He casts a Mox Diamond, discarding a Bayou. He then casts a Ramanop Excavator. After that, he casts Obnixilus the Fallen. He plays his Verdant Catacombs from his graveyard, triggering Obnixilus at dawn. He sacks his Verdant Catacombs, searching up a forest onto the battlefield, triggering Obnixilus at dawn again. He plays Verdant Catacombs again from his graveyard, sending Obnixilus to dawn yet again. He sacks the Catacombs one more time to fetch a forest, once again firing Obnixilus at dawn. To really get the point across, he attacks dawn with Gitrog. Afterward, he casts Regrowth, targeting Vampiric Tutor. All finished up, he ends his turn. At the end of Mike's turn, Ryan activates Yisan, versing for one and finding Aquarian Ranger. Ryan plays a forest for his turn and passes. Dylan plays a Reliquary Tower for his turn. He casts a Mox Opal and then casts a Felwar Stone. After that, Una, Queen of the Fae, hits the battlefield. With nothing else, he wraps up his turn. On his turn, Dawn is ready for revenge and casts Mana War, targeting Mike's Obnixilus. After that, he passes. During his upkeep, Mike sacrifices a forest to get Rog. He recasts Obnixilus. Dawn, still feeling the burn from before, casts Venser, Shaper Savant, bouncing Obnixilus back to Mike's hand. Mike casts Vampiric Tutor, but Dylan counters it with a Pact of Negation. He plays a Verdant Catacombs from his graveyard and sacks it to find a forest. He then casts Traverse the Ubenwald. Ryan, knowing Mike has Delirium, responds by versing his Yisan for two and fetching up a Scavenging Ooze. He exiles Pernicious Deed and Vampiric Tutor from Mike's graveyard, making him lose Delirium. When the spell resolves, Mike finds a Swamp and puts it into his hand. Mike attacks Ryan with his Ramanop Excavator and Dylan with his Gitrog Monster. Ryan double blocks the Excavator with Aquarian Ranger and the Scoos, and Dylan blocks with Una. In his second main phase, Mike casts Animate Dead, targeting his Ramanop Excavator. He plays Vernet Catacombs from his graveyard and cracks it to find a forest. After that, he plays Birds of Paradise. With nothing else, passes to Ryan. Ryan plays a Cavern of Souls for his turn, naming Human. After that, he ships the turn over to Dylan. Dylan pays his Pact of Negation trigger on his upkeep. He plays an Island and casts Ghostly Flicker, targeting Gilded Lotus and Felwar Stone. All wrapped up, he ends his turn. Dawn sacrifices his Mana War to the Tabernacle Trigger and pays one for each of his other creatures. He casts Deadeye Navigator, pairing it with Venser. He attacks Mike with Glenalandra, Venser, and Animar. Mike blocks Venser with the Excavator and blocks Animar with his birds. After that, Dawn passes. Mike sacrifices a Forest to his Gitrog Trigger. He cycles Desert of the Indomitable. He attacks Dawn back with his Gitrog Monster. In his second main phase, he casts Obnixilus. He plays Vernet Catacombs, targeting Obnixilus at Dawn. He cracks the Catacombs to find a Swamp, targeting Obnixilus at Dawn. He plays Vernet Catacombs again, targeting Obnixilus at Dawn again. He cracks the Catacombs again, finding a Swamp, and you guessed it, targets Obnixilus with Dawn. He plays a Mana Crypt, and then a Perpetual Timepiece. He activates a Perpetual Timepiece, milling a Dismember, and a Command Tower. Mike moves to his end step and discards down to seven. He discards a Dakmore Salvage and uses the Gitrog trigger to dredge Dakmore back to his hand. The dredge fails to mill a land and he returns Dakmore back. Ryan at the end step activates Yisan, holding priority and using Quirion Ranger to untap Yisan. He activates Yisan again, allowing him to double verse for two four drops. Mike responds by cycling a blasted landscape, looking for a potential answer. Not finding anything, lets Yisan abilities resolve. Ryan fetches up a Teemer Sabertooth and a Karamecha's Acolyte onto the battlefield. Ryan plays a Forest for his turn and then activates Yisan, using Quirion Ranger to double verse up to six. He fetches up a Bane of Progress and a Great Oak Guardian. Dylan floats mana from his mana rocks before Bane of Progress destroys them. Ryan returns Great Oak Guardian to his hand through Teemer Sabertooth. He attempts to go infinite with Great Oak Guardian, but Dylan is ready and counters it with a Counterspell. Moving to plan B, Ryan casts Natural Order, sacrificing Llanowar Elves. Dylan counters that with a swan song. Ryan, after having two spells countered, decides it's time for Dylan to go. He attacks Dylan with his Teamer Sabertooth. After that, he passes the turn over to Mike. Mike sacks a swamp to his Gitrog trigger. He plays a strip mine and a maze of it. Mike throws a Hail Mary and casts Torment of Hailfire for 10. Ryan thinks for a second and then verses Yisan to seven and fetches up a Regal Force, drawing six cards. He discards nine cards and takes three life. Mike, knowing it's over, passes it back. Ryan begins his turn and activates Yisan to verse for an 8 drop. Wow, what a grind. 
Each deck tried to claw their way to victory, but it was Yisan who came out on top in the end. Ryan's tight play and calculated knowledge of Yisan allowed him to take this match. Don't think that the guys are going to let him rest at the top though. Tune in next time when we will see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.